Aloha, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. This is the Politics in Hawaii series. Today, we are going to be talking about medical cannabis. We've got uh, a couple of guests here today, uh, Jari and Terry, uh, that we're going to talk about from the patient and caregiver perspective, what it actually means, what the dispensary issues are, um, what some of the challenges are, uh, and where we are at the moment with regards to the ability for patients to use and, and, and really how caregivers have come about uh, their decision making for the usage of it, so and, and application of it. So first of all, let me welcome our guests, Jari and Terry. Thank you for joining us today. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. So um, nice to this is an important topic. It's a, and, and actually, it's a it's a relevant topic. It's a current topic because just this last legislative session, 2016, we passed the dispensary bill. Correct. Actually, that was in 2013. They transferred administration of the program to PS. Uh, PSD, uh, from PSD, Narcotics Enforcement Division, to DOH, and in 2015 is when DPH assumed uh, the, D the DPH. program, the Department of Health, I'm sorry, DOH. DOH, Department, Department of Health. Department of Health. Okay. And they did, so it's more like 2015 this started rolling around, but that's there, when the there act was, was signed. Was and there, was there not legislation in 2016, was it 2015 that the last legislation the, came the, out? The enactable part came around in 2016, where okay. they say the dispensaries thou shalt open. There are actually several huge pieces of, you know, bills for an act and everything that covers all that. Things and currently, happen. one of the things that's going on, what happened last week with, with Act 230, they stood up a, a legislative oversight committee for, uh, they call it medical marijuana, we prefer cannabis. The Jari is one of the... Uh, patient advocates very we don't have very many patient advocates in the system and she happens to be one and okay. she you went last week for their uh, second meeting that they had and this working group is going to meet for two years okay so let's we'll, we'll get into that in one second let's start let's go back a little bit and say okay um terry you're a patient yes and jari you are a caregiver correct and you are both advocates that's correct okay let's ask okay so you you are a patient how long have you been a patient, and can you tell us about what got you here? I've been a patient since 2000. That's when Hawaii enacted a medical program. And uh, what got me really active was because Narcotics Enforcement Division at one time uh, met a request from a paper in Hilo. They said, how many patients do you have? And what they did was they turned the entire database over to the paper. That database included where I grow, who my primary caregiver is, all kinds of you know, personal medical information. And they just turned that over. Mm. And all I got was a little letter of, oh, we're sorry. We just turned <laughs> over all your records. So oh. that's what got me started as an activist as, because as an just, advocate. I was But what just, about as a patient? Uh, I was a patient in 2000 because I have multiple sclerosis. There are several qualifying conditions. Multiple sclerosis is one. Uh, Jari, on the other hand, is a caregiver for someone with epilepsy, a child with epilepsy. So when did you get active? So I started back in October 2013. I applied for a certification that she has a qualifying condition and epilepsy was part of the qualifying condition. So she was eligible to receive her medical marijuana card. That was in 2013. Since then, she's currently still utilizing medical cannabis. Um, we have been, she has been a patient since then, 2013. Um, my role as her parent is her caregiver in this process and we basically just we acquire we grow we extract um, we do everything possible to get the most out of this plant and we administer it to her um, for her condition okay and so you're you're both uh, the parent and then the as, as far as the regulations or as far as the process is concerned you're also considered the caregiver yes because it's a category mm -hmm. in order in order for you to be able to dispense uh, two. Is it your daughter? Daughter, yes. Okay. How old is your daughter? She's now seven years old. She's now seven years right. old. Okay. And when I first met them, uh, she's still nonverbal to, to uh, you know, most nonverbal. I would guess she would categorize it. But she was not walking. And when she walked into the governor's office, when they signed this bill, I still, can, I was just seeing through tears. I mean, I just couldn't believe it that that, that child got up and walked in. You know, it was so that's amazing. one of the one of the benefits of, of utilizing this medicine is that it enabled your daughter to be able to walk. Well, yeah. Um, so the one can, of the you, benefits you can, yeah, explain, is explain some of what happened there. 
Right, so we, we were able to see some seizure reduction and that fluctuates because of our consistency in growing the plant and extracting the oils. But there is a huge benefit in her cognitive ability has improved. Mm. And she, her gait has always been a little wobbly, but that has, in, that has gotten better over time. Okay, and so, so she's well, getting stronger and more aware. Very aware, very sharp. She's still very hyper no matter how much THC you give her. Um, it's, it's, it's a how, balancing act. How long has she been um, taking this medicine? So from October 2013. So it's been oh, okay. about three years or so. About yes. three years. Yes. And, and how quickly could you begin to see some of the progress? So early on, we saw immediate progress in terms of her seizure control, but some of the other benefits we're just seeing now, and it's three years later. So it, she has been on it for three years, but the benefits were not always right away, and we lost some control here and there with the growing and the mm. extractions. Um, we're getting better with that, but we do see her progressing and her, her quality of life improving. Okay, you say you lost control of some of that. It, was that mm -hmm. What was that based on? Well, so... Once you qualify, right, she has a qualifying condition which enabled her to get a card and be a part of the medical marijuana program. Mm -hmm. The rest of the responsibility after that falls on the caregiver or the patient. So you, it depends on how well you grow the plant, what strains you can acquire, how well you extract the so product. How you connect to the growers and or the suppliers. And, and currently That's we have no way to test our patient grows, okay? okay. So we're taking guesses at what, uh, what, you know, what will work, you know, how much, and if you're growing from seed, that's an even bigger gamble. This is like the little blue card, right? That's the that's called 329, card 329. Right. It used to be blue, I think now it's beige or something. Yeah. Okay, so it's just, but it it's used to be, it's referred card. to as the blue the card. The blue card, we always right. call it the blue yeah, yeah. card. That's right. Okay. Okay. It's in your wallet. It's a it's card. A, it's a card. Right. Okay, and, that, and you, having that card means, now, um, I thought, and correct me please, mm -hmm. I want to learn this. I thought that uh, you get this blue card and it was then your responsibility to connect with a primary care physician who would, would prescribe this, and then you have to ha be connected to a specific grower. And I, how does that, I thought that that's, it needed to be more specific or aligned. How does that work now? Yeah, it actually works online now. You start the process online because the state's gonna get its, uh, you know, it's gonna get its por portion right away. And that's where you apply with a debilitating condition. You go online, fill in the blanks. It's a very cumbersome uh, interface. It is not intuitive at all. It has just been stood up by DOH recently. So uh, it's, it's Hawaii DOH? The, yep, the Department of Health has just uh, fielded that recently recently in the past year that it's it's burdensome for the physician it's burdensome for the patient and they want their money up front so you apply there you still don't get anything say in your patient then your physician your qualifying physician or a PRN I think they're called the nurses now that can qualify to do it because so few physicians want to uh, it's not actually a prescription it's a recommendation that this particular herb will help you based so on based on their qualifying conditions. right and so then they apply they go to their portion of that uh, online software and they fill out their portion and then after that, you're still not issued anything to say, even you're being considered, used to back in the old days, you got a temporary card right away that said, you, you know, it's being processed. Well, now we don't get that. We pay more and we get less, but we don't get that. So we wait then hmm. further for the physician to fill out his portion. And then finally, you're issued a card, hopefully sometime in the following year. And then at what point through this process do you get to start taking the medicine. You're not supposed to do it according to what they say until I have the card in my hand. And that could take years. That could take year, weeks. That weeks could take six two. weeks. You okay, know, you know, weeks. I'd say six weeks. I said a year because I was being kind of sarcastic. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, a little, a little bit sarcastic. Hyperbolic, a little hyperbolic there, okay. <laughs> a little bit. So it can take six weeks. Six weeks. Still, but if you're, so you if you are right in need of the cancer, care, if you're a cancer, six weeks can feel like forever. What if you have a child? Are you going to wait six weeks for well, your child to stop having seizures? See, and that's, if yeah. you're a cancer patient, are you going to wait six weeks until you, you know, until you yeah, get that to go with your chemo? It's an urgency. It's a personal urgency recognizing yeah. that there is an urgency. They, they, they well. still are criminalizing patients by the way they're doing it because they have no consideration yeah. for how dangerous it is out there. So, okay, let's, um, let's jump back to, okay, so what, 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 came, what happened recently, and, and let's, let's put it into some context. The idea of medical, back to 2000, medical cannabis was first authorized in Hawaii 15 years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. And it took until... 2015 to mm -hmm. actually have the dispensaries. Mm -hmm. 
So now that there's dispensaries, well, are there dispensaries yet? <laughs> there we've been going through that process because once you make the law then you have to make the administrative rules that make right. that law you know get that implement that law mm -hmm. so they've been going through those processes and that's sort of a you know in the backgrounds uh, i guess fight to some extent as well just to make that happen so we're not there yet so the dispensaries aren't there yet but there are many people such as yourself who have that card and there is still currently a way for you to get what you need and so is that the same process that has been there since 2000? Yeah, it, it, the grow your own. You have to grow, your, to grow own your own and create your own medicine, whether it be concentrates is, are there quantities, or edibles. Are there quantities? Oh, of, yeah. are, and yeah. Tell us about that. What are the, what are the restrictions? And what are, the, what are you able to grow? How much are you able to grow? How much are you able to have on you at any given time that is legal along with that card? Because if you don't have that card and you get caught with it, it's a whole different problem, right? Right. So how, tell us about how that works. So the physician basically just certifies that you have this condition. Okay. Once you have the card, you still have to wait till you receive the card. And then once you receive the card, if you want to grow it for yourself, you still have to wait four months before you even get to harvest. So for a typical patient, that duration is problematic. Once you are able to get the product, you're limited on how much you can have. Like you were saying, you can have four ounces at one given time. You're allowed to have seven plants. And so that balancing act is challenging. So the grower is allowed to have seven plants. Yes. Does do they care what size those plants are? We, we, we hear different things from when they're sitting around this table at this mm -hmm. working group about, because we've told them how useless some of those plants are, small plants are for most patients, unless they're juicing. Now, if they're juicing, they're going to need 30 of, of those small plants a month. They don't even take that into consideration. Okay, yeah, the, the product and how that's going and to work. And how right. you take it. Do you smoke it? This child would never smoke it, so her mother has to make an, right. an oil, which takes a lot of product. So they, they condense it down. You know, you've heard of Rick Simpson's oil, Phoenix mm -hmm. Tears. Mm -hmm. It's similar process. You just you reduce that down, and we'll show you some of that later. It's, you have to dilute it then from that particular form in order to get it to the mixture that's right, appropriate like or, that. or, and, and now how does that work how, who determines what that mixture is or what the potency level is how is that determined it's basically trial and error i mean we were lucky that we were able to meet an, a lady an auntie who helped us with her testing um, of her products um, mm -hmm. of our products um, she has a thin layer chromatography machine so with that assistance we were able to finally find the right dose for our daughter um, but that so takes time. So you had time. to test it to see how did yes. this work, how did that work. How now, can you be consistent now what about, any other way? what about which version of the product? You have to go through test trial and error there. All of Some them. Some of them are more potent than others. Of course. Mm -hmm. So therefore, and then you have to find a preference. What mm -hmm. does your daughter right. want? And, and the, there's like 200 components in this. There's CBDs, CBGs, CBAs. I mean, these components all work together to, with this uh, to create this uh, type of medication that will stop and control seizures. Okay, we're so, going we're gonna to jump into that. We have to take a quick little break at the moment. So again, thank you for joining us. So welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. This is the Politics in Hawaii series. Today we're talking about medical cannabis. Uh, thanks again to our guests for joining us. We'll be back in one minute. Thank Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I serve as Senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on Think Tech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our healthcare system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting Think Tech. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Aloha, welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Uh, again, today we have our two guests, Jari and Terry, talking about medical cannabis. So, okay, let's go back uh, a little bit. We were talking about uh, how we get to 
what product we're going to be using for this, and it's a trial and error. Um, and I, I think uh, off air you were just saying it takes it took three years to figure out. Tell, uh, can you tell us about that? Right, so a lot of physicians are hands-off because it's a Schedule One substance, and yes. there's a lot of unknowns regarding medical cannabis and how it will affect their, their practice. So for three years, it took, us to f it took us three years to figure out how to grow the product, and then once we grew the product, we realized we had a high THC variety. Um, it wasn't specifically in line with what our daughter needed, so the plant has a number of different cannabinoids within it, so it, it took us about three years to finally realize that she needs a variety that has... Um, high CBD, cannabidiol, some THC in there, and what really works for her is this cannabinoid called CBG, cannabigerol, um, and that balance of those three cannabinoids is really what's making her thrive right now. Um, it's taken so years. So it's a combination of those three for her, right? So and, it's very individual. And, and is there a ratio of each? Um, is it a there's mixture? a balance that we use, like a four to one ratio of CBD to THC, and a little bit of that. Okay. And, and it, it took a. It took a lot to get the jar to put THC into the mix. We had to explain to her, mm -hmm. because I mean, you know, that's, that's the bad boy that everybody talks about, the hallucinogenic, the, the terrible thing, you know, people are gonna reefer madness. So what we had to explain to her was this, that the, the natural receptors in the body are THC receptors. Mm -hmm. You need just enough THC to open that receptor and then flood it with the CBD, the CBG, you know, and but you've got to and open that's the a receptor, trial and, error. and and you don't want too much THC. We don't want talk, MJ talking in the mirror to her friend too much, but you know. So the, okay, so what I find interesting and fascinating about that is how all of that is placed in your hands. Yes, it is right. As opposed to every other medicine. Yes. that is out there. Yes. The doctors are the ones that tell you this is what to do and this is how yes. it's mixed and this is when to do it and how often to do it and they have it prescribed. Now they say, well, we're, we are giving you the reference or the recommendation for you to pursue this as, as you choose and it's up to you to figure it out. They, we actually need what the doctors have. They have a physician's desk reference. You go into a doctor, mm -hmm. right? You see that big, huge red book yeah. sitting on their desk? And when it comes time to prescribe something, they pop open that book. They look at your symptoms. Mm -hmm. They think about a, a case they had two years ago that maybe had the same thing. And they're able to give you a prescription, something to try, yeah. you know. And basically... Oh, because it's trial and error for doctors, too, sometimes. That's why they call it practicing medicine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that, so there's, there's no a reason it. for that. Yeah. It is not perfection. But but they give it their best shot based on empirical <laughs> evidence, mm -hmm. a database of in their brain of past patients. They don't have that option right now. There are some people, like I believe the Aunt Zelda uh, Corporation, is working up a database that is. Yeah, because it would know. seem to me that that would be needed. And, yeah, and that's a you want to know where to start. You know, no, okay, here are the strains and here are right. the different processes to get from this to that. Right. Because that's the whole thing. It's like now that you have a plant, then what? You have yeah. to figure out, well, okay, how do I want to use it? So uh, let, let's transition now. Let's take that into what these products are. So first of oh. all, pull out. Let's, let's take a look at this. For, this is the plant. This is it. And this, this is it. We want to yeah. make sure that everyone can see these numbers over here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It, is, it is tagged according. It's it one is of tagged my plants. accordingly. This plant is, is a baby. It is useless to me. It has no flowers. Okay. I mean, it's nothing to me. If a person, like I was talking about juices, mm -hmm. they, they would need 30 of these a month because they pull them up when they're leaves and nothing more, throw them into a, a blender, you know, a juice maker, uh, juice extractor, and it becomes, to, boom, it becomes a... Uh, there's oh, a way to get a... Get a better there's no way. There's no real easy way to see what this is. Ah, yeah. Uh, it's, so. it's tiny. And we so. don't, we don't want to know, you know, that shouldn't count against my plant count. That is not a flowering plant. This is also from seed. I have so, no idea right now so if wait, it's male is, or female. This is young. This is, this a, is baby. a seedling, basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how, how long has this been growing? Uh, I'd say this one's been about six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. When do you think it'll get to that level where four it Four months be? at a minimum. So four months. So from the time you plant the seed, four months later is when it's usable. Yeah. And these are under lights. I encourage growth and I feed them and I watch for pests on them. They have, th this, this is not viable at this point. This could go whole four months almost and then it could suddenly pop open male little male parts. Do you, to does, it, does that matter? It matters. I've, male plants are useless to me. They're compost. 
Oh. They, they're useless in her concentrate. They are so compost. So the power is in the female. It's in it the female. It is female, always. Yeah, it's <laughs> we important. rock. And so we don't know that, though. We have no idea. I could, I'll nurture this for three or four right. months before I know if it's male So that's or an female. important process, Daddy, yeah. to know <laughs> that this may be a useless plant. That's so right. does this currently count? Yes. As a it, plant it's supposed to count. And you're me. you're allowed seven. I'm allowed seven. So this is one and of your seven. And if it gets sick and dies in two months, I have to start all over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this and yeah. the dispensaries, yeah. Let's get it off here. I'm getting dirt all over. I actually want a little culture. Tree <laughs> so you can, so it, it has, um, you know, it, it's it. If you're juicing, like I said, this is nice, but you need thirty of them. Thirty of them. Yeah. yeah okay. And let's say that it, we've gone the four months, and we're gonna uh, let's let's show them what we yeah, make let, with let's, this. Yeah. Let's pull out some of this. See, this is the next thing. So yeah. we have this, and it grows, and you get to the point where okay, we have a female, and it's of the appropriate size. So now, what do we do with it? Yeah, I didn't. We didn't bring any uh, uh, grinds, you know, like the the little buds, because yeah. everybody's seen those. That's but what fine. you haven't seen is when we take this, and she was talking about how we can have four or five ounces at a time. It takes a lot of this product. When we harvest that plant, we'll harvest the whole thing, and we'll get maybe, what, six syringes like that? Or oh, no, quite a bit. Maybe a bit. like over a dozen. Over a dozen yeah. syringes. Diluted, though. Di because that's going to be diluted. It is going to be diluted okay. also. So what do, we, this, what do we have? What do we have? Let's go through what do we have here. So this is the plant itself. Right. Um, what are what is what are these? These are these are pills. So so right, we would take the flower and then we would extract the oils from them. So like Terry was saying, we we can come up with a concentrate and we figured out that the alcohol is a better extractor. So from there, it's a very concentrated form. We dilute it down. Some people prefer it in syringes. Um, other people prefer them in capsules like this. You can always mix them into a transdermal so cream. If it's this a, is a transdermal. So cream. this is the cream. Mm -hmm. So here, try to, here's the cream. Right there. Right. All right, and it looks like it looks like a butter. It looks right. Yeah. Right. But it's actually how, how would you how would you consume this? You wouldn't. So people who have back pain or seniors that have arthritis oh, or other so you rub issues this on, yeah. that are pain related are, are I know somebody topical. Who, they, okay, this is kept. okay. So this is a topical application. Right. Okay, got I it. know somebody held off knee surgery for two years by using a topical. That's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. So these these you consume. These you, right. You, so if you don't you, like the taste of it, if it's very grassy or weedy, yeah, weedy you just for you, drop you it would down take and it down. I would imagine your daughter is more interested in these. That would be My daughter has a tube. So for us and a lot of children who have epilepsy, we put them in. We dilute them okay, down. Okay, so that's the syringe. Part. And we would syringe them into her stomach. So that's actually it's actually chilled, but it's coconut oil infused. Coconut um, oil infused. Cannabis oil. And uh, so therefore, how does how is the flavor impacted? Um, I don't know. She actually uh, does it through her she stomach. She does it through too. her stomach. Oh, so, yeah, oh, okay, so it doesn't okay, okay. really affect her. All right. So this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. And it, what to tell them what a dose looks like? It's really tiny. For her, it's about a mil every two times a day. One, One mil, mil, two times a day. Right. Yeah. Very and, tiny. And and it keeps her progressing. Right. Yes. So the version that we have for her now is is on the con not concentrated, but it's it's not mild. I would say it's not like a five milligram THC dose. It's somewhere all along like ten. 10 milligrams of THC is what she can tolerate, okay. and that has been titrated up over the years. But it's not a, it's not a base. It's not a very um, is this low just dose. another? Is this just another, another way dispensing you can dispense it? Yeah. Yeah. Dispense okay. So it whether whether it. it gets now, I so there there are oil, there's there's this butter or cream. Cream. Yes. We don't want to call it butter because mm -hmm. people think right, you can right. get it. So it's a cream, mm -hmm. a topical cream, and then we have the syringe that gives us the opportunity to. Um, I, I, what are the different? I, I guess is, is that the only way to to administer Doser. this? Doser. It's a dose dose is through that, or um, is well, there? She could do it orally, she but she just orally, prefers not. Which is very I oily, yeah, totally for one meal. Yeah, the taste is terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would imagine. It tastes like grass. <laughs> um, and then it's you know, or or and uh, how many how how many of these would and that's all based on you figure it out. It's all based on dose. So if oh. you if you were to have a book such as the medical book you're talking about, it, it's all based on milligrams of THC, milligrams of CBD, mil okay. of CBD. Okay, and, and so which of very, those works best for you? Right, or based on your body weight actually and, and your condition. Oh, so as so as your daughter gets older, right, and as her condition might change, her body weight her weight dosages increases. will change. And that's the concern about the dispensary is really the affordability of products. Um, because as she gets older, right now something like this may run her $400. It's not just affordability, it seems to me. Mm -hmm. Tell me how this works as far as, you know, you said that there's one strain or one combination that works for you. Right. Those right. dispensaries have to have, I would imagine, all of these available. 
right? all of these different Not strains and all of these different options available. They're going to look at a very homogenized strain that they can market quickly and move out because well, people are going to settle. How is that going to help, though? That's if, it's, well, I don't see that our preservation of strains is a priority for them. Well, so far, they haven't said so. I think as far as understanding it, I think the key is understanding right that fact that some of these strains and some of yeah. these combinations are going to work better for some patients versus others and right. a homogenized version mm -hmm. isn't oh, going to achieve the goal and right. scientifically uh we'll, we'll come away from street names you know like maui wowie at some point <laughs> because this will be classified Let's by make terpenes. them latin names <laughs> <That's right. laughs> they, they'll be classified by terpenes and um mm -hmm. other other aspects of the plant yeah, that yeah. that's how you'll classify it you'll know how how it's done like that so we need science involved in this that's why we were real happy about doh getting involved see and that, okay so let, let's get back and then we're gonna have to wrap up in a minute here so yeah we need to have the science involved we need to make sure that it's clear we need to be able to get as much information and much mm -hmm. case study information as far as here's how this worked for this case and for that right, right. condition and, and so that we have the ability for the doctors for the scientists to be able to go okay now that we see all this case study now we can start labeling this the right way now we can start administering this or prescribing this perhaps in the right mm -hmm. way and that's sort of a direction that I don't know it makes sense but people are afraid of because of its current classification still, right? It makes sense to legalize it because we're not going to get doctors unafraid. Well, I mean, it's legal. We it's legal. I think we got to legalize it. It's not legal it. on a federal level. I'm, I'm it, saying we better have to go federally and legalize it. And I, when I first started as a medical advocate, I was not adamant about that because I really didn't care about recreational unit users. They were out there yeah. on their own. Yeah. But it has become so difficult. Look how long it took over a decade to move to anything. To get this. Get this. So uh, I'm like, and, and there are other aspects to yeah, it Yeah, I just well. say, so, let's legalize it. Let's Let's stop scaring people with it and so let's just educate. legalizing it from from a medical perspective yeah because I mean if you take it off of that schedule yes it suddenly becomes a different category yes. and that's one of the things I think they're afraid yeah. of from a policy perspective we remove it from this category all of a sudden what are the what are the ramifications exactly. what are the impacts yeah. mm -hmm. at multiple levels not just medical and I think that some people are concerned about that now a lot of people compare this to well it's it's better or no worse than alcohol Right? I mean, is it? Well, if they would focus on rehabilitation of people and what causes drug addiction, because drug addiction is a whole other animal. I mean, when you're addicted to something, th that addiction is is genetic, environmental. I mean, it's a very complex issue, and we we need to work on that, not putting people in jail. You're not going to fix well, them that's a whole other by thing. putting them in jail. How we put people in jail, the number of people in jail, and yeah. why they're in, how long, that is a whole other Well, we need to stop question. criminalizing patients. Absolutely. So, stop okay. it. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, la last, last thing, there, you, there's a website and then there's this, there's this working group. Tell us about that and then we're going to have to wrap up. You want to, they, they do have, with the policy, what's that called, that they're, um, the, there's the public policy public center. Public policy center, there's a website. We're trying to get and people uh, to come out. And this is out. called a, you don't like this word, but Medical Marijuana, Marijuana. Legislative Oversight Working Group. And they're going to meet once a month. They meet once a month. The public can only have 10 minutes for input at the end of their meeting. We are not encouraged to participate on the board. They don't even want us to call in experts. They have to, the, the brain trust is right there at the table, so I really need the public to show up. Who's on the board? Jari for one. Okay, good. Uh, nice. Della Abilotti and Roz okay. Baker are the co-chairs. Okay, okay. And then there are various people from the trade organizations, including uh, Hawaii Dispensary Alliance, uh, Drug Policy Forum, uh, and uh, has a representative there. But it is heavily, the whole thing is geared for the trade organizations Got at this it. point. Okay, 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 okay. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, but thank you so much. Um, I know that I have learned. I hope that people who have, are watching this and who will watch this will learn from this. There's much more, I think, to learn mm -hmm. and much yeah. more to know. There's more policy that needs to come up. There's more awareness. And yes. I think the key is awareness first. Policy can follow and can be more effective if there's more awareness and education about it. Mm -hmm. So thank you again, Jari. Thank you, Terry. Well, thank Appreciate you joining <laughs> us here. Welcome us. back, please. Mm -hmm. When there's another level, another step of what's going on, please let us know and we can have you come back. Maybe we find out what legislation there is this uh, we, session. You know what? I think that's going to be coming up shortly. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. So thank you again for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. This is our Politics in Hawaii series. Thank you again to the staff and crew of Think Tech Hawaii, and we will see you next week. Mahalo. Okay. I think that was